my big takeaway of life is if you're constantly taking the easy way out, you're never going to callous your mind. I was a chameleon living in life who could barely get by. So I know that they were taking the normal mindset of people. They weren't talking about the one percenters, the people who want it like there's no tomorrow. Everything I didn't want to do is what got me to where I'm at today. It's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes with work. So whenever I was getting beat down physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you can't hurt me. I had this haunting voice in the back of my head. A lot of us have it. We just ignore it. And it was there for years. So I knew in the back of my mind that I could pull off this whatever. Whatever I wanted, I knew I could. I knew that, but I, I was afraid of the work because I wasn't gifted with brains. I wasn't gifted with God-given talent as far as like athleticism. So I knew to get to where I had to go, to be on the same playing field as these men, to even try out for this program, I knew the work was gonna be something that I didn't wanna even, even attack. So I'll just put it off. It haunted me. That's what I realized for myself was I wanted that comfort zone that everybody looks for, that pat on the back. They don't want to hear all the bad. They want to hear everything that they're doing right. And I realized that's what kept me in this world. That's what kept me in this world of not accomplishing anything. What I did was I became that big, bad, nasty that you don't want to walk into at nighttime. I became the roughest critic in the world on myself. And that's what changed me. I literally saw myself Everyone at some time or another sits down to a banquet of consequences. A man who is as wise as a serpent can afford to be as harmless as a dove. The mind is restless and difficult to restrain, but it can be controlled through practice and detachment. Bhagavad Gita You need something to fall back on when you get depressed. Find something you love, something you can lean on to, something that would keep you going. Life isn't something you possess. It's something you take part in. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Jim Rome. My reading, my learning, my, my workouts, my, my, my diet. You start neglecting all of that. You neglect one of them. You can, you can neglect all of them a long time. It's going to haunt you. When you start seeing that, my God, I haven't eaten right in a long time. I haven't been asleep right in a long time. It can only be one of those things to take you off. I'm very aware of my eating, my sleeping, my disciplines of life. And I started to get too far away from them. It's a hard stop. And the one thing, the only thing that gets me mad nowadays is that so many people die with untapped potential because they think that someone else has come better than them. And they were born not with the greatest tools. You need the ability to grind your ass into a fine powder. And when you're in that fine powder, find a way to build that back up repeatedly. That's possible. When you come from a small, small town and you come from a place that a lot of people don't want to come out of it and get out of it, and all you want to do is become somebody, you've got to be able to get out and let your mind see open-mindedness. Because a small town, what it does to you is it closes your mind, completely closes your mind. Not everybody. This isn't everybody, a lot of people. You have to be able to go out there and create open-mindedness. You need space. You need space to see the world. Like a lot of racism, a lot of, a lot of ignorance in the world, it comes from people not being out and seeing other things, seeing other people. That's why we judge so harshly, because our minds are so closed to the reality of of life, period. Self-esteem was built at a young age. I had zero. So that's why that discipline for me was important. It takes nothing to be a loser. And that's why I hold most people to a higher standard because I know how little it takes 
little, like little ability. Like you need no talent, you need no greatness inside of you, and you can still be a bad mother. What then disturbs me? The sea. No, but my opinion. Again, when an earthquake shall happen, I imagine that the city is going to fall on me. Is not one little stone enough to knock my brains out? What then are the things which are heavy on us and disturb us? What else than opinions? What else than opinions lies heavy upon him who goes away and leaves his companions and friends and places and habits of life? Now little children, for instance, when they cry on the nurse leaving them for a short time, forget their sorrow if they receive a small cake. Do you choose then that we should compare you to little children? No, by Zeus, for I do not wish to be pacified by a small cake, but by right opinions. And what are these? Such as a man ought to study all day and not to be affected by anything that is not his own, neither by companion nor place nor gymnasia, and not even by his own body, but to remember the law and to have it before his eyes. And what is the divine law? To keep a man's own, not to claim that which belongs to others, but to use what is given, and when it is not given, not to desire it. And when a thing is taken away, to give it up readily and immediately, and to be thankful for the time that a man has had the use of it, if you would not cry for your nurse and mama. For what matter does it make by what thing a man is subdued, and on what he depends? In what respect are you better than he who cries for a girl, if you grieve for a little gymnasium, and little porticos, and young men, and such places of amusement? Another comes and laments that he shall no longer drink the water of Dirce. Is the Martian water worse than that of Dirce? But I was used to the water of Dirce, and you in turn will be used to the other. Then if you become attached to this also, cry for this too, and try to make a verse like the verse of Euripides, the hot baths of Nero and the Martian water. See how tragedy is made when common things happen to silly men. When then shall I see Athens again and the Acropolis? Wretch, are you not content with what you see daily? Have you anything better or greater to see than the sun, the moon, the stars, the whole earth, the sea? But if indeed you comprehend him who administers the whole and carry him about in yourself, do you still desire small stones and a beautiful rock? When, then, you are going to leave the sun itself and the moon, what will you do? Will you sit and weep like children? Well, what have you been doing in the school? What did you hear? What did you learn? Why did you write yourself a philosopher when you might have written the truth? As I made certain introductions and I read Chrysippus, but I did not even approach the door of a philosopher. For how should I possess anything of the kind which Socrates possessed, who died as he did, who lived as he did, or anything such as Diogenes possessed? Do you think that any one of such men wept or grieved because he was not going to see a certain man or a certain woman, nor to be in Athens or in Corinth, but if it should so happen in Susa or in Ecbatana, for if a man can quit the banquet when he chooses, and no longer amuse himself, does he still stay and complain? And does he not stay, as at any amusement, only so long as he is pleased? Such a man, I suppose, would endure perpetual exile or to be condemned to death. Will you not be weaned now like children and take more solid food and not cry after mamas and nurses which are the lamentations of old women? But if I go away, I shall cause them sorrow. You cause them sorrow? By no means. But that will cause them sorrow, which also causes you sorrow. Opinion. What have you to do then? Take away your own opinion. And if these women are wise, they will take away their own. If they do not, they will lament through their own fault. <laughs>